Welcome back guys to our Android programming tutorial series on Android material designing. In the previous video, we had introduced ourselves to snack bar. In this video, we will go through the Google guidelines that are being defined for the snack bar and implement the simple snack bar in Android Studio. So let's proceed. This is the official website which defines the Google guidelines for various components that are being introduced with Android Material Designing. On clicking the navigation icon, choose the components and move to Snack Bars and Toast. So we have already discussed, Snack Bar provides lightweight feedback about an operation by showing a brief message at the bottom of the screen. It can contain an action. It is similar to Toast but there is a small difference between the toasts and the snack bar. That is, the toasts do not contain actions and cannot be swiped off the screen. I have already said this and now let's move towards specifications that are being defined for snack bar. The usage guideline says show only one snack bar on the screen at a time. That is, the multiple snack bars on the Android screen is not allowed where it has to be placed. It appears above most elements on the screen and they are equal in elevation to the floating action button. This is how the elevation for the snack bar has to be set. Now looking into the behavior of the snack bar, it says that snack bars animate upward from the bottom edge of the screen. They can be swiped off of the screen or it will automatically disappear after a timeout or user interaction elsewhere that is when the user interacts elsewhere in the screen. The next guideline says about the text strings that are to be written in the snack bar. It says the snack bar should contain only a single line of text directly related to the operation performed. They may contain a text action but they cannot contain the icons. The message that has to be displayed on the snack bar has to be small and precise. The use of icon in the snack bar is not allowed. In the picture given here on the right side, this snack bar is the simple snack bar. It may contain a text action as we had seen in the previous video in the example of Gmail application. At the top of this page, we had seen that there has to be a single snack bar on the screen. So, this transient guideline says the snack bars automatically time out from the screen. It should not be stacked one upon the other or they should not be persistent. On the left image, we can see there is a single snack bar but on the right side, it shows the first message sent. When you send the first message, the first snack bar appears but it has not been swiped off the screen and after the sending of the second message, the second snack bar appears. This kind of usage of snack bar is not allowed. The next guideline says there has to be zero to one action on the snack bar. That is, there cannot be two or more action text on a single snack bar. If an action is present, comply with dialog spacing and affordance rule. Two or more actions use a dialog, not a snack bar, even when one of the action is a dismiss action. Here is the image showing the do's and don'ts regarding the action button or the action text to be used in the snack bar. The next guideline describes about the floating action button and the snack bar. Move your floating action button vertically to accommodate the snack bar height. That is, the snack bar and the floating action button should not overlap. Similarly guys, there are few more guidelines that are given in this web page. I would like you to go through it yourself and understand about the snack bar more. Now let's move to Android Studio and start writing code for the simple snack bar. Let's proceed with the simple snack bar and implement it in our application. The syntax for the snack bar is same as the toast. Just a single line of code and your snack bar will be implemented in your app. Snackbar.make root layout which displays the message 
simple snack bar example and the snack bar dot length long dot show that is it will be displayed for the duration of length long now this root layout is the id for the frame layout that we have to define in our main activity this root layout is the name of the layout or the parent layout that we will be passing from our activity main dot xml in activity main dot xml let us provide an id to the frame layout i have given the id for the frame layout as my layout in the main activity dot java let us define a frame layout now inside the on create let us provide the find view by id for the frame layout this root layout will extract the frame layout which has the id my layout now let us run our application and see if our simple snack bar is implemented into our application now guys this is our application up and running let us check if our snack bar is being implemented or not click the simple option and here we see we get the snack bar with the text simple snack bar example this snack bar disappears after a time out now it has been discussed that the snack bar can be swiped off the screen but here we can see this simple snack bar which has the parent layout as the frame layout cannot be swiped off the screen here lies the use of the coordinator layout which we will be talking about in the further videos so in this video we learnt about the google guidelines that are defined for the snack bar and we also implemented the simple snack bar in our application in the next video we will be customizing this snack bar its background color and its text color we will also be implementing some actions in our snack bar that is we will be implementing some action text in our snack bar that's all for this video thanks for watching if you like the video do share and leave your comment below the video subscribe to our channel and help us grow i also have given the link for the source code of the entire module below in the description you can go there and refer to it that's all for this video for further videos stay tuned keep smiling and have a good day